What's up everybody? Welcome to top four. I hope your heart survived <laughs> that uh, <laughs> sudden death. I was uh, I almost fainted. That double colorless. So uh, so sad. Yeah, the Pikachu is also not fond about it. Um, but now we are onto a very, very interesting mm -hmm. top four mm -hmm. game. We have Pedro against Tord. The only two player that ever won the Oceania um, International Championship. So we have we have both of them now here playing with uh, Zorak in a kind of a mirror match. Not ex they don't play exactly the same list, of course, um, but a very similar deck. Pedro plays some cards that make the um, mirror match a bit different. Of course, Todd has also his um, cards, so it will be interesting to see. They are both, of course, um, prepared to be going up against um, this deck. So I'm really looking forward to see that. Well, I think it's probably one of the first times these two have been streamed against each other yeah, I since so Todd um, has won the Australian uh, of the Oceania uh, IC. Which means that it's actually kind of the, like a battle of the IC champions we have, which is really cool. Okay, here you can see the coin flip. Very important. <laughs> I think both uh, players know full well that in this matchup, but you know, we've said Todd has said this. Pedro will know as well, yes. right? It's like, right, who wins this coin flip goes to the final. I think <laughs> Todd posted on Twitter that he won all coin flips during this. Oh! oh. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but there was a big cheer from Pedro as that happened. <laughs> um, I, I actually I said earlier during the last round that on stream, even if you see the coin flips, you don't see who goes first. <laughs> but I think this is kind of obvious. Um, yeah, so Pedro will be um, starting the game. And um, they can already set up, but his starting hand doesn't look too amazing. Um, oh, actually, he has a yeah, he has a fine, Rua, so and an Ultra Ball. And I think it's and very, very similar. similar yeah. <laughs> it might be a very close so mirror, weird, but yeah. <laughs> very similar opening turns for both players. Like the boss, open their hand. The first card you see, just Surubudo. <laughs> they both had a Zuru, I think. Tord and for for Tord, it actually looks like there is a difficult decision here. Um, it, yeah, it's. Oftentimes, when you start with just the one poke, well, you start with one, you just throw it down. But there are actually some matchups where picking which one you want to start with makes a huge difference. And you, throughout the day, when you win the coin flip, you might not know that because you don't know what the other person is playing. But when you know full well that it's a mirror, and these guys have been chatting for like the last hour mm -hmm. or two whilst we've had other games on, like these guys will know what to expect. I think this is the longest I've seen someone agonize over which Pokemon to start with, though. Yeah, it seems like a, a weird really, position. So really he does tough. put Zorua active I think the pseudo and the bench. Sudo on the bench. Yeah, now they can place their prize card. For us, it's a little bit complicated um, because of our camera. And well, we hope it doesn't come down to the prizes uh, this game. We want to be able to see us back and forth. Uh, to see the Zoro do the Zoro things that it can do of have turns where you go from no board state to absolutely everything. Yeah, and now we see um, the judge placing the prize cards for them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's sometime. But if they are if they are finished, then they can start with the game. But that was a really cool coin flip uh, going back there. So we have both lists here. We can talk yeah, a little so bit about the differences. So definitely, Pedro he plays um, two hex maniacs, but Tord also plays two hex maniacs, mm -hmm. which is. Not really that um, popular, but of course, Pedro only with this three execute uh, mm. and his Saves Me Toad EX. Um, that's kind of different, and also, um, yeah, Toad plays Oranguru, which um, Pedro does not have. Other than that, they're both, yeah, fairly similar kind of uh, standard lists. Now we can see the prize cards to Zorua for Pedro and to Zora Arc for Tor. They're really going for this mirror. And both hex. Oh dear. Oh. Well, both hex being prized means that basically Pedro has free reign to trade and propagate as much as he wants. And as soon as the Sudabudo comes down, which will likely be immediately, uh, oh, he's at the Aracario. Um, these are these prize cards. Oh boy. Yeah, this. Well, we were saying that we were hoping that the game wouldn't come down to prize cards, but yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> I may have jinxed that. Um, so straight away, battle compressor from Pedro. Immediately. Don't only say nice things now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I hope the game. Oh, it's only decided by prize cards, <laughs> and then the prize cards. Yeah, will everything be I say irrelevant. that I want to happen will happen. <laughs> This is basically me playing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Alright, so Pedro goes first, now we can see his price card. You will soon realize that his Zoruas are priced. You might see that these are the standard Zoruas. And we talked with, we already streamed Pedro, and he said <laughs> that these are the only Zoruas he has. Yes. And that's why he plays them. He also, he said that the only reason he plays three execute is because he has three. And that's the executes he owns. Which I find quite surprising because with the fact that they have, you know, many of these players are very well known, very well liked in the community. It's, uh, it's quite surprising that he wasn't able to at least ask someone for an execute. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I mean, even I uh, gave some Zorua. I, I think I found four of them in a, in a box somewhere. Yeah. I just gave them to someone in my league who was like, ah, I really need that. So uh, he's opted to battle compressor away Zerua. Yeah, so that's telling that he has either double puzzle or a uh, rescue stretcher in his hand. He also has a Lele. Um, yeah, he has a Tapu Lele. So he could have bridged it. Yeah, he could have bridged it, but he knows ah, that there is only... These are all yeah. Zoruas. And he also knows that the pseudo Wudo situation is awkward. Yeah. Because if he bridgets, you know, he plays the Lele for the Bridget, he then takes whatever he gets and he doesn't have much space left on his bench for the rest of the game. Turn one Hex Maniac. <laughs> you can see Tor direction is like, yep, that's how that's how this game goes. Alright. So now it's Tort's turn. He'll draw. He goes first. He also got a You got a Tapulela? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Yeah, but nothing. Yeah, I think their hands are almost identical. Um, really Oh he has an egg. And He passes. Oh, oh boy. Dear. Does Pedro find himself a Zorak? He got the <laughs> Shaman, so he will draw some extra cards. And also, like, Ram can actually deal 40 damage against Arcario. Oh, it's, it's weak to dark, um, yeah, of course. So, set up. And this... <laughs> so weird. Oh, oh dear. This, oh, could be, oh, this could be very quick. Uh, yeah, so... Not looking, oh, he drew, three, he drew three. Not he looking too to good. Um, um, for Torch. So he used Propagate to draw. The thing is, is Tord didn't even have a chance to switch to his deck. So let's see. Him, which means that Tord is not aware of his prize card situation. Uh, he isn't, and now Pedro has the option. He can actually Tapu Leila for his second Hex Maniac if he wants to. He knows that yeah, there is probably no space for Zorua anyways. So yeah, Wonder Tag. Now, do we see another Hex Maniac? Um, he's Looks putting like it that's in. The option. Yeah, it's hard not <laughs> the not of approval. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, I would do part. too. Yeah, it's um, an awkward situation because by being able to chain hex maniacs for multiple turns, especially early in the game, um, starting from turn one, that means that you don't have access to things like one tag to get your uh, board established. Um, and at the moment, he doesn't need to use hex maniac for the extra damage, especially with no Zerua on towards side. The mo most HP on his side of the board is ninety. He doesn't need to hit Skyfield to be able to take big KOs. So he's actually kind of content to just go, I'll use the Hex Maniacs, we'll find a way of getting them back later. Oh, and now another Hex. Um, <laughs> not so great. I'm pretty sure, if you, if you can, if anyone can read lips, I'm pretty sure Tor did his signature, but why? Uh, then, whilst, uh, as the Hex came down, uh, promotes the egg. Oh, and his hand's got a Shaman and a, a Lele oh, in God. it. So it's sad. Like these are, these are, not nice. So he just benches it <laughs> and Passes ends back. his turn. <laughs> Pedro's also like, yeah, but now he will get his revenge yeah. for a torch to um, for stealing taking... his crowd in Oceana. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so trades away the end because I think at this point Pedro might be able to understand Torch's hand's not very good. Uh, uh, yeah, I would guess that too. Um, uh, so I he don't discards know if it's uh, Pokemon Ranger, actually uh, an interesting card that you put into a stake. It gets rid, it gets rid of Martin Janusz uh, <laughs> Chaos Wheel. <laughs> yes, um, um, but of course mainly against uh, Garbodor. And I uh, actually um, did hear Sable, uh, uh, Seismitoad. Yeah, so when we had him on it, um, yesterday, he said as long as I run to one Seismitoad, I'm happy. And he actually uh, needed to top uh, to hit both Seismitoad Energy or like. Seismitoad and to be able to get his uh, abilities and stuff back you've got something like Field Blower as well off of enter low hand size I suppose like there's no way he's playing Ranger there's no way oh he's played Ranger yeah well never mind <laughs> that's it and now Pedro using Ultra Ball for a uh, Seismitoad EX 
He can either just put that in the discard pile, he doesn't really need that. Or if he has an Hex, he can just put it on the bench and replace it with the Shaman, for example. Often... He doesn't need have the to, Hex. Um, yeah, so here we see Hex, <laughs> another Hex Maniac. Um, great card. Um, of course, completely stopping um, Tord from having anything. And also giving Pedro that <laughs> extra hand size. Um, I mean, Torch now agonizing over the choice of do I go Shaman or uh, go with the Pseudo Vudo. No matter what, in this situation, it's likely that the Pseudo Vudo uh, ends up in the uh, active position because if he'd gone for Shaman, he would have Sky returned into it. Um, so now he's in an awkward uh, spot where he's just looking at his hand and he's just like, pass again, there's nothing he can do. Uh, I think that's three basically draw past it turns in a row for Tord. Yeah, and now Pedro, he was able to find another Zorua from surprise cards. Um, he, because the Hex Maniac is now not active anymore, um, the Sudovudu from Tord of course activates, and like we already said, now he can just put his uh, Shaman into the discard pile. He doesn't need it, um, and it's only a true prize card where it's on the bench. Might lose him the game later. Well, I think that would require Tord to yeah, drop exactly. a few yeah, important something. cards in a, t in a few turns. Yeah, but uh, now it's almost over. So Tord might actually scoop here. I think even your 60 minutes, 60 minutes is not too much, and Zorak Murrocks often take a lot of time. Uh, yeah, let's see how many prize cards it takes um, until Tord also decides to scoop the game. Well, I don't think he's, he, again, still had the chance to search his deck. He doesn't know what his prize game yeah. situation is, and I think as soon as he does and goes, oh wait, there's two Zoroark and both Hex Maniac in here, I think we can just save the time. There's very little in the way that he can uh, kind of respond at any point. Yeah, exactly. And now we see the computer search. For the VS Seeker. For the Hex, perhaps? I would suppose. <laughs> I mean, this is all that Pedro needs to do. Every turn, just Hex. So, in standard, some people are crazy and play Garbodor or Zorak, but in mean, expanded, you don't need that. You just yeah, have, you you just need Verse Seeker, and that's course. all. Obviously, for London, Tord uh, spoke about afterwards how he tested basically a 45 card Zorak engine and 15 cards to beat whatever format you walk yeah. into. It's into an expanded, you just need the Zorak engine. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and then you're already fit. And then you're fine. That's it, yeah. That's, so, that's your deck. I. I think for both players, both familiar with Zorok, but they played it for a while, uh, they both go, well, again, yeah, this was the obvious choice coming in, and we see that it, it's just capable of grinding out games, if it, you know, if you can chain the Hex Maniacs, but also doing crazy things like just exploding and hitting 210 every turn. Yeah. Has there been a single turn where Pedro's was the Hex Maniac? No. No, no, it's no, only, if, it's only oh. if, like, it's just the fourth turn, right? Yeah. yeah. So, nothing. Oh. He finds Zorua. Oh, <laughs> Sky return for a 60. <laughs> so Tort now is breaking the hex lock because now Pedro probably read. No, no, yeah, whatever. <laughs> now, Tort can now look at this prize card. Uh, so that's 1 0 for Pedro. Um, Very short game. Uh, ten kind of game a one. sad game, I would say. And yeah. he, sh he shows like, yeah, there were two hex maniacs pressed anyway. Yeah, it's like, like even, had, there was nothing. Even was if, nothing. even if my, uh, even if, if I, I would have gotten to go first, or even if I had a good hand. No, nothing. Yeah, well, it's, the, yeah, he had no way of ever getting past the pseudo Rudo, which meant he was never taking one uh, one hit knockouts. Whereas Petro could just hex and do whatever he wanted before yeah. he hexed. And now there's 15 minutes left, it should be enough to uh, finish both games. It's an entire standard switch round. We exactly. had the Zorowak yeah. mirror on yesterday, it took the 50 minutes, so we should have plenty of time to get through both games. Uh, which would be nice, because I don't think I could handle another sudden death. No, no. Not after that last one. That was... <laughs> that's enough. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, the lists are quite similar. Yeah, I'm interested to see if Oranguru also is doing a lot in this kind of mirror match? Well, so Tord obviously talks about the way that you can basically lock something active, but that's because you had the combination of e uh, enhanced hammer with the Oranguru. Yeah, exa like in, in standard, it's a bit different. Like most decks don't have so many options. You can't like, but here you can just versus Seeker for all of your Guzma as well. 
Um, and in standard most like a lot of decks have like three Guzma. Mm -hmm. And of course in the mirror match, uh, depending on what kind of mirror match you have, your opponent has four puzzle and then either four or three Guzma. Um, so you can all play that, but here you have four puzzle and four versus seeker. You um, have a lot of Guzmas. And you can also take a wanted knockout on his aura. Mm -hmm. Well I think um, his main reasoning will be just for the mill. I think he was burned by mill just just too much in Leipzig to ever ever risk not wi winning against it again. Um, it's also just a basic Pokemon you can put on your bench and then you deal more damage. Yeah. Well, that's something that Zoroark has open to it in both standard and expanded is your, your tech choices of uh, cards is open far wider because you draw more cards and if it's not useful in that matchup, you can just discard it. So you have things like the uh, Giratina promo that is uh, playing the standard with Zoroark. You can just discard if you're not up against Greninja. Yeah, exactly. So and uh, you're so, you also have Bell Compressor. Yeah. Uh, so but I think... You probably wouldn't discard Oranguru unless it's a really dire situation. Also, Tor plays Oricorio, but Pedro actually doesn't. Um, so that's another thing. Also, what Oricorio means is he can start. He can uh, place uh, three damage counters on any of the benched executes. Yeah, uh, exactly. If there are multiple, in, or, as if, soon as there are things discarded. Yeah, exactly. So if there are a few Pokemon in the discard pile already, uh, you can maybe draw two prize cards in the mirror match. So your opponent always have to be extra careful. Mm. Uh, so we might see that coming down and um, the prize cards are being placed yeah. currently. Uh, very thankful to the judges for being patient with us um, with, yeah. with, the, uh, with the prize cam this weekend. It's, it's all running quite good I think. Um, I didn't have any any problems um, so yet. So now here is, Todd goes here's first. the handshake <laughs> and the game starts. So both start with Zorua but Todd's Zorua is a little bit better. Um, it's there is there's almost no situation where you actually attack with um, Zorua. No. But if you want to attack, then often just Paralyzing Gaze would be better. It might win you a turn. It'd be interesting to ask them uh, at the end of the tournament if they ever actually needed the attacks and if they ultimately think the one they picked was the correct Zorua. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if Tord had to use Paralyzing Gaze, but he doesn't have a way of doing damage with this Zorua. Whereas maybe that 20 damage for Pedro at some point has managed to just chip over a knockout to be able to take some prize cards. So, you know, they're, they're probably situations where both would be nice, but it, I, don't, I don't know if they've run into that over the course of the weekend. Yeah, in, in Prague on the stream, um, Todd actually attacked with the standards over, uh, to take a knockout on a buzzword. Yeah, well, it's, it's just like you said, it means that you can read 20 shorts and it's fine yeah. because you have a one prize attacker. I suppose it's a one prize attacker, you know, it's it's perfectly good. Attacks for DC. Yeah, All the but, good attackers do. But I think in in expanded of course you have better options, just like Oracorio, which yeah. is just in, insane, I would say. Uh, so Todd goes first, opens with an ultra ball. If his hand is looking good he can hex. Otherwise just a Bridget would be fine. So we can look at the prize cards. There is one Bridget. But of course, you play usually two. Uh, but there is also one Bridget prize for Pedro, and I'm pretty sure he only plays one Bridget. Yeah, that's what he told us. Um, the only thing he regrets, mm -hmm. because he said he lost a lot of games. I think it was something like he switched the Ranger for the Bridget at the yeah, last exactly. minute. Paranoid about the amount of Toad and uh, Tina that might be yeah, played. Yeah, interestingly enough, both are prized. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that would be uh, the same, anyways. So the prizes this time actually not too crazy. Sword here opening with the Ultra Ball for Shaman. Um, with this way of playing the cards, uh, so instead of going for Bridget, going for the Shaman allows him to potentially get the turn one Hexes. Uh, hexes. Not, not Hexes, <laughs> uh, Hex Maniac. Um, I'm so used to, like, say, turn one Gets This. Yeah. That, yeah, that kind and, of I mean, if there was together. a card that did that and also Hex at the same time, that oh, would no, <laughs> that'd be a problem. That. <laughs> and actually, a setup for five. Really strong Shaman here. Um, yeah, five cards drawn. If there is an Hex Maniac there, Todd can play Ultra Ball. And he can draw a true puzzle. But he doesn't have Execute, so he can't get so much out of the whole thing. Oh, um, so he's now trying to work out. What's the last card? I don't. I see two puzzle and two choice bands. Yeah. Uh, it's a really painful hand to have. Yeah, he's not in a position where he doesn't really want to discard basically any of this. The choice bands are really important because if your bench is full, you deal 180 damage. So with the choice band, you can deal 210. Um, and then also, you never want to discard puzzles. 
because you can't get your puzzles back. Oh yes, three easily. puzzles. Oh dear. One that's reverse, I think. And oh, it's a verse seeker. So, ah, uh, well, we'll see later, anyways. Um, okay, so he goes for the. So he goes, discards one verse seeker, and the choice band. Quite painful. Um, and now he kind of has to go either for another shaman or another tapulela. Um, yeah, he obviously deciding for Tapolil, his hand is too strong and I think I have to correct myself the Versus Seeker from no, 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 what's it? Supreme Victors um, have a very look very similar to Puzzle of Time if mm. you don't see the whole artwork so I'm pretty sure he actually has two Versus Seeker in his hand um, which means he has access to the chorus which is in the discard pile so yeah, using the bridge it doesn't uh, put him back in the, um, at all Yeah, so he goes for Bridget <laughs> also grabs a uh, Sudovudo, limiting Pedro's options, of course. Not allowing him to go for a similar turn like Tort did, uh, where he can just Shaman and then if he doesn't get the Hex and some other cards. Well, now Pedro is very much reliant on what cards he has in his hand and ways of finding his rubies in this way. And ideally, he's still ending, uh, finding a way to get to a Hex quickly so that when he gets a chance, he can start using the Zoroax to take knockouts. Because as soon as the Sudowoodo is in play, the damage is capped at uh, 100 for the Zoroark, or 130 if they find the Choice Band, which is, uh, is a clean uh, two, uh, three hit knockout if it's only the 100. And I don't know if Tord is playing any uh, heal cards, I don't think he was. So at least the damage would stick around. Alright, so Tord is preparing for Getsus, um, using Versus Seeker to get the Chorus back into his hand. Pedro already has two of the Ruas in play, so the Bridget is not so important for him. And also, also, if he is somehow able to get into a Hex Maniac, then he could bench another bench Pokemon. So if he has like a full bench and then Hex Maniac and another Pokemon in his hand, he can use the Hex to prevent Todd from using... Um, yeah, Trade, of course. And Pedro just using Pokemon Communication, the black and white artwork, uh, not the most popular one. <laughs> Um, it's a card that only really will see play here because there are so many like one-off Pokemon and cards that you need to have access to particular things at particular times with the fact that you can just propagation and execute out of your discard put it back into your deck with Pokemon communication to get the card you wanted it's basically a free kind of ultra ball and you can then battle compress the execute back into the discard anyway so it means that you have a lot easier access to some of the Pokemon that you need uh, we see it is actually a Pokemon communication for the uh, Execute this time and then discarding them both with an Ultra Ball so he can Seers grab something else. I think it's a computer search in his hand as well so he'll have access to both Ultra Ball and uh, computer search in the same turn. Uh, both effectively for free now. Um, and he's trying to work out exactly the best line because without the spent spaces that he would be given by uh, you know taken away by the Sudowoodo he has to be careful with choosing exactly the right Pokemon to bench at the right turns uh, we see go just instead just for, for another Zerua so and the computer oh, search oh the computer search is quite nice so uh, yeah. if his hand is looking fine then he can of course just take anything um, with the executes um, he can use Ultra Ball, Computer Search for maximum value, he doesn't need to discard anything and he can choose between discarding a card that he that he doesn't want to use anymore or just... Propagation and have um, it for free. Yeah, and also he can fill up this bench, like, Propagation does so many things in this deck, it's it's really insane. Well, so that was something that was the big thing that's changed with Execute, is that it used to just be a kind of hand size fixer for decks that needed to have particular combinations of cards and be able to play things in particular sequences. Oh, and here we see a high five for a setup <laughs> for six, um, six cards. So Pedro got a... Very nice turn going so far. He hasn't, he hasn't used support yet either, so he has the, he has the right card. He can but if he can find a way to get to the Hex Maniac at the same time, um, that puts Tord in a slightly awkward spot. Definitely. He can also... For the execute active in theory. Um, no, the torch could just scary turn that. So if he ends his turn with an active Zorua, it's quite likely that it will get knocked out. So he wants to be able to choose something um, 
you know, he, yeah, he needs to be able to find a way of making sure he can survive the first hit and uh, go from there. So we do see him go for the Lele into the Hexmaniac and going, hey, this worked last time. I'll just keep playing Hexmaniac. Uh, but this time, obviously, Todd had a turn before the Hexmaniac, so he's got a bit more board presence. So... And Pedro also knowing that Tord has Chorus in his hand, um, just playing the red card, which means that Tord also kind of wasted a Verse Seeker, just yeah. playing it without uh, an advantage. But of course, you don't really want to take too many risks. Um, well, I think both of these are also playing Getsis, and I'm guessing they've been Getsis a few too many times over the course of the weekend to go, hang on, maybe I should use my VS Seeker just so I can have a support for next turn. But Tor's hand wasn't fantastic outside of that chorus, so perhaps he's, you know, there's a chance that off this red card he actually sees what he wants to see, uh, which would basically be the SR arc so he can start taking knockouts. So. Down comes the Hex Maniac. He has the. Petro's agonizing over this. Do I just play the uh, execute and then uh, promote it uh, that's what he's going for so he's basically said right I don't think Tord off uh, the red card before um, and Hexmaniac has access to Sky Return this turn to be able to take this knockout however with, the la with how the last game ended with people top decking DCs I wouldn't rule anything out so I think that was another this is Seeker Tord has drawn into Um, and a battle compressor. I think there might be two battle compressors actually. So, computer search comes in for one of the very shiny eggs. We haven't seen very many secret rare executes this weekend. Uh, most people have just opting to play the common. Um, Tord was very happy when he found extras. Uh, he, you know, was just like, oh yeah. I was like, oh no, I had to play Expanded. I don't have any Expanded cards. And then looks through his bulk and found two gold eggs. So, it's okay for some. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of annoying that the cards are so, expand uh, so, so expensive in Expanded. <laughs> so, not the format is Expanded, but the prices as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, Tord, just using Belt Compressor to get his executes into the discard pile. Um, he goes for two executes here, and he can also discard... Hexmaniac, for example, um, it's very common to just put supporter cards that you actually need into your discard pile quite often, just so you know you will always have access to it um, with a Versus Seeker, for example. Well, this is where we see playing two copies uh, having full effect, because it means things like Ultra Balls and Tapu Lele's are announced to it if, it's still in, uh, if one copy is in deck, and the other VS Seekers are then announced for it if it's in the discard. So you always have access to both of these places to go get grab your resources. Yeah, another card Tor just discarded is, is Skyfield. Um, both players only play Skyfield as their stadium, so <laughs> there is no way for them to get rid of it. Um, um, Tor <laughs> playing Tor with without any hand cards, and there are six Pokemon on Tor's side and five on Pedro's, so he can actually draw 11 cards with this Colrus. Um, really, really strong card. Um, in theory, you can even draw. Yeah, if both benches are full, you can draw 16. <laughs> Haven't seen that yet. It's. I think quite we saw it in round one. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. and, and then it was followed up by some more trades, just in case. Amazing. <laughs> uh, most of the time, there is a Sudobudo active. Um, it's because now all decks that play Skyfield also play Sudobudo, just to take away that advantage your opponents get, because both players get to have eight bench Pokemon. I think Nick would be uh, someone who can uh, comment to that because uh, having played Mega Ray Quaza, is it that Sudowoodo with Mega Ray was kind of like, oh, well, that's not fair. You get a bench and I don't. <laughs> having said that, the only deck of Sudowoodo that I played against at Worlds I beat, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that was Bika Bulu. Oh so. boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Tord putting even more bench Pokemon. So you might wonder why there are five bench Pokemon for Pedro, even though Sudowoodo is in, in play. But keep in mind, Hexmaniac is still active. So. Um, Roadblock doesn't, like it technically doesn't exist for the uh, rules of the game. Right now, Sudovudo has nothing but one attack, Rock Throw, that deals 40 damage until the end of this turn. And now Tord is able uh, to retreat. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. So Pedro can just put an Execute active 
but that will just get knocked out by Skyrim turn. However, the alternatives he had were putting either the Tapoleda or the Shaman from his bench active, but these are EX Pokemon, so Todd could have just drawn two prize cards and that would put Pedro so much more back than just um, giving Todd some extra resources. Yeah, so that's why the Execute is active right now. Um, so it's interesting to see that Todd's already played down one of his uh, his standing Zoroark as well, because in most games you don't get an awful lot of value out of that because you can hit 210 so easily with your Zoroark GXs. Um, but here it basically says to Pedro, look, if you do manage to set up and t take a big knockout next turn, it's fine. I'll just do the same with a one prize attacker. Uh, and it also means that he has access to switching so that if he gets in awkward situations later on where he needs the Guzma, but also attack with the same Pokemon, he can like, stand in first and be able to do so. Yeah, and now after using the Scary turn, Pedro has to discard a Pokemon. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. He does not, right? Because he, he promotes puts the Pokemon first. active first. Yes. Um, uh, so the way this works is you automatically promote as an act uh, during the act of the knockout. Yeah, it's still like the Pokemon goes active still during your opponent's turn, mm -hmm. and Hex Maniac only stops after that. And I believe, strictly speaking, as well, that uh, Tor doesn't have to promote until after Pedro had chosen what was going up, because then you resolve the effect of the yeah, attack of exactly. Skyrim. Sky so, so Tor just puts our Corio active, same reason as Pedro put the execute. It's just it's a non-ex Pokemon which is not needed currently, um, and there is nothing as uh, Tor wants to sacrifice. Of course, he needs all of his Zoruas. The roadblock is too important um, to give up. So Orokorio is the perfect Pokemon to have active here. Pedro now um, using his Propagation and then Trade. There is already a Double Colors Energy card attached to Tort's um, Zorak. But that Zorak also has a Float Stone. Mm -hmm. So it actually can take the Wanted Knockout. Uh, which means that if Pedro finds Hex Maniac, there is a chance that Tort doesn't get um, everything. But you have to keep in mind that we know already that there is a Shaman and a Double Colors Energy in Tord's hand. So it's still quite likely that Tord is able to take the knockout, especially if Pedro doesn't get his Roadblock uh, in play. But for that he would need a Hex Maniac, which would also turn the Roadblock off too. Um, so kind of a weird position for Pedro to be in. But these are, I think, the, the normal turns you have in the expanded Zorak. Uh, mirror matches. Yeah, these early turns are kind of a little maze to walk through because you both want to be hex maniacing and using the uh, Sudowoodo and also having access to trade and you can only do so many of these things and you have to sequence these in a very careful manner. Uh, and we see, I think that's now the third egg going into discard for Pedro. And then two two other cards. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Uh, looks like a Guzma and... I can't tell what the bottom card is at all. Well, maybe we will... It's a Guzma and another card. <laughs> yeah, so we already explained that you um, often just discard your supporter with Battle Compressor, then you have a better chance of actually using it. And here we see um, the Versus Seeker going down into an Hex Maniac. So, um, yeah, Pedro trying to for Tort not to um, take the Wanted Knockout here. If Pedro also finds himself a um, Sudavudo, that would be great because then after Tort, Tort's turn, ends. Uh, he would need to discard his bench and then he would also um, always be forced to deal with it. But unfortunately um, hex, for Pedro, he wasn't be able to find that. So now Tord, um, yeah, can take the knockout as long as he gets a full bench and uh, a choice band. However, he cannot use Propagation currently so um, and he cannot trade. So this is the thing, I think Pedro has managed to hit Hex Maniac effectively every turn. Yeah, I think he, he... Like, including in the first game. He he's on a bit of a streak with these Hex Maniacs. Uh, and now Tord, red card. Um, so to have the knockout after an Hex Maniac, you need to have a lot of hand cards as well. Um, this is why red card Hex Maniac is so devastating. But yeah, because it, it means that you need to have find ways of Hex Maniacing, filling your bench, having the Choice Band and the DCE, and you need to do that off of four cards. Yeah, uh, exactly. Which is very difficult, because you need about five cards to do that. <laughs> so they all need to be perfect. Um, so if Tort finds the Hex Maniac himself, that would be even better. Um, 
In this case, it looks like he just can't take a turret knockout. But he has a puzzle. Oh yeah, he ha here's the Hex Maniac. So now Pedro can't trade. He has only two hand cards and also two random cards. Um, yeah, they're not in no way affected by anything like um, yeah earlier trades. So you know, wasn't really set up anything. He cannot use Execute as well. We do see he has an Ultra Ball in his hand, which is not good to have uh, if you are under the lock of Hex Maniac, because you have to discard two other cards, and whatever you get, it's not too great. But I think he a Sudovudo makes yeah. sense here, because now he can just put it onto his bench. And then he can discard the Shaman at the, at the end of the turn when the Hex goes, because that's just two easy prize cards for Torch to be able to take at some point. Um, so. It's got on the size of a toad. It looks like it's not going to get. Um, he, he decides it's going to get no value in this matchup uh, because with the ability to just trade, you know, who needs item cards? Just destroy everything. Uh, and now we see Pedro kind of deciding uh, what makes the most sense here. Yeah. yeah, he wants to go for the Rua first, but goes for a pseudo voodoo and plays a bell compressor afterwards. Oh, his, he only has one hand card left, and yeah. I saw that it's a rescue stretcher. Nothing you really want to have. No, so he, he can attack into the active Zoroark, but I don't even know if he wants to necessarily do that this turn because if he attacks, he only has the energy on the active. If he attacks into it, Tor can simply just retreat and attack with the one on the bench, which is fresh, and the, he has no energy on board, one hand card. Um, and so. here we see the first turn without Hex Maniac, <laughs> which means Tor can draw six cards. And if one of them is a, either a puzzle, because he already has one in his hand, or a Versus Seeker, he can use Hexmaniac himself. And then Pedro doesn't have anything in there. So now we see him just go, oh, that's fine. I'll just discard my Lele. I don't need this. Yeah, and both uh, players, they're having to go, oh yeah, roadblock. I oh, both this, of us. this actually kind of good um, because now if Tor doesn't play Hex Maniac then Pedro can also um, use the Rescue Stretcher for the Shaman if he wants to um, because he gets one extra bench space if the active Zora gets knocked out however like I already said it's now really unlikely for Tor to not have an Hex Maniac uh, himself and seeing Pedro didn't play any supporter card um, every at the moment every supporter card would have been better than um, just non-supporter card at all which means that um, he can tell Pedro probably doesn't really have a great hand at all. Well, so Todd here is going for the Zorok from off an Ultra Ball uh, for free and opting to trade that away, like we said earlier on. Once you have access to Propagation and Trade, you can choose, do I want to thin something from my deck or my hand, or do I want to just have the free card? And he's and Todd's gone, well, I'm not going to get a Zero to survive at any point. Uh, so we may as well start thinning the deck out and uh, take the take, take the chance off the board of uh, being blown out. So the double colors to the uh, breakthroughs are up here. Again, it basically says to Petru, hey, go ahead, Hex, set up your board, take the KO. But I'll do exactly the same thing. Hex Maniac. And there is the Hex again. And I think now, yeah, now Tort has such a dominant game position. Um, it really comes down to the top card Pedro just got. Um, if that isn't something amazing, and his we, aim, what was that face? I can't tell if that was a, 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 a oh, it's a good card or it's um, it's not so good. Uh, well, see, he just passed. I'm gonna go with not so good. Another bench compressor. Tort now down to five hand cards, uh, five <laughs> deck cards. Um, and in theory, he can fill up his bench as well this turn, and he should have. I mean, his hand is so big. There's almost no way he doesn't have access to a choice band and full bench this turn if yeah. he wants it. Uh, and there's no reason not to take the knockout uh, this turn. Because it means then that you don't actually have to hex maniac uh, Petro to stop him having access to trade, because you'd have to have it in hand. And seeing his he's got two hand cards and he didn't seem too happy with them, it seems a little unlikely. Yeah. Tort has almost the same deck cards as Petro has hand cards. <laughs> it's uh, crazy. So now Tort, he can use hex maniac after using propagation. So he uses four times propagation. 
plays Hex Maniac, puts all of them on the bench. And here we see him grab the choice band and Hex Maniac with the double puzzle. So he can attach the um, choice band. <laughs> makes him space makes, for makes himself. Makes space <laughs> for the X. Um, in theory, he could also take um, another card if he has a rescue stretcher. Um, well, I think actually taking the the eggs here is actually quite nice for him because when the Sudowoodo kicks back in the turn after, he just puts all the eggs back in the discard pile, and if you can find the hex again, does exactly the same thing. Exactly. I don't know if Tord is aware of the fact that Pedro doesn't have Oracorio, but even then, you would need to bench two eggs anyways, um, so that doesn't really matter anyways. Yeah. So two press cards taken by Tord. He only needs one. And Pedro and very gingerly pokes uh, the zero up going. Um. <laughs> There's no way, right? <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. So he just goops. 1-1. Um, one, one. Yeah, really, really interesting game. We do see the value of going first. Because when players go first and hit those Hex Maniac, their opponents really don't have much chance to do much in their opening turn. Uh, no access to set up Lele propagation to make your ultra balls and your computer search free so you can hit these cards it yeah. makes it an awful lot more difficult so yeah it's kind of sad I would say uh, but it seems both players are having fun and enjoying this I know they are good friends uh, and like chat a lot so it's, it's nice to see that even though this is a fairly big game this is a semi-final of a regional uh, not for them it's just yeah. just, <laughs> just a semi-final right uh, yeah so um, like, but they're, like, you know, they're like yeah this is fine we'll have fun we'll high five when we hit cards with no hands you know uh, and now we will see who is the better Oceania winner. Yeah, this is it, it all comes down to this. Or Pedro, one single game. Pedro can go first, and if this first uh, turn one is looking like the other turn ones Zorax usually have, uh, then this will be very painful. Well, I think Todd did say that basically by winning the coin flip, the game beca you become so much more likely to win the match in this yeah. uh, deck. But we've also seen Zorak decks just having a really bad start with nothing in there and if that happens for Pedro of course well this is a side effect of playing so many one-offs like the Zoroark decks have access to so many cards as a one-off that sometimes you wind up getting a combination of these in your opening hand that gives you kind of no options and you're like well now how do we play this out to escape the, this awkward first couple of turns um in fact, we saw it a couple of times on the stream yesterday that I think, you know, games where you'd think Zorox should be favoured just can't quite get going. So, both players basically uh, set up and ready to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they're shuffling and then we have to put the, the prize cards prize down, card is true. As well. um, yeah, there is nothing, I don't think there is too much um, to say about the f both games. Everyone should now understand how a mirror match from Zorok works. So you fill your bench, take, try to set you up for a one at knockout, then you play X-Maniac. Even if you can take a one at knockout, then you still have to play X-Maniac. <laughs> no matter what happens, if you didn't play X-Maniac in your turn... It's bad. That's not a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, so, actually a lot of players um, have been discussing the where Zoroark falls in terms of the power level, and maybe it's a little too strong in the expanded format. Because people, I think it's one of these things of like, when you get these crazy turns, plus X, so easily and so often it becomes kind of frustrating because no matter what you choose to play you sit down and they go yeah but I'm just going to do the same thing and run you over uh, it's a combination of but it's a case of there's not a single card in this deck that causes this one problem it's a combination of having things like Skyfield Hex Maniac the Zoroark the Propagation all of these bits fit together just right to, uh, to create one of the most powerful decks um, well, in this format, but also for a long time. And Pedro's hand looking quite fine from uh, what I can see currently. Um, he did start Zorua. I think he also had a Sudobudo in his hand. But of course, if you go first, there is no reason to put anything but your active Pokemon. Um, so, always, this is just a rule. If you go first, only put your active Pokemon. Nothing else, nothing on your bench. Because maybe some, maybe you forgot something, uh, maybe there is some kind of weird interaction, or the card you draw from top of your hand is is so uh, makes your hand so different that you really need to have that Pokemon in your hand. So, for example, if Pedro um, put the 
to the Voodoo first and he has like an Ultra Ball in his hand and draws another Ultra Ball and then out of all of a sudden he doesn't have enough hand cards to play both of them down uh, and so he denies himself the chance of using Shaman and Tapolito for example for a crazy turn one with, uh, followed by Hex Maniac and discarding the Sudo Voodoo of course you can just use um, either Puzzle of Time or of course um, the stretcher. Rescue Stretcher exactly to get it back later uh, and maybe maybe this kind of situation happens to you and then you do not want uh, it on the bench and there is nothing your opponent can do during your first turn so and ma and even sometimes like if your opponent already sees like ah uh, <laughs> we've just seen double red card <laughs> but i think the first hand was really bad right i don't know but th this is something that like so very often, you know, this is clearly done because you just showed the shame. It's like, I'm just thinning my hand so I can get more cards off of this, uh, this setup. But there's also a thing at this level, there's also a chance that they can read the body language of their opponent yeah. well enough to go, right, I've, I've hit you for four cards and you don't seem sad enough. So do it again <laughs> and maybe you're worse off this time. Yeah. Be sad. <laughs> um, looking at the prize cards, Fortority has two Zorok prize Zorok, again. which is, it's fine actually. Um, he... As long as he draws one of them at some point, there shouldn't be a big, big of a deal. For Pedro, the rainbow card there is a Tapulela. Yeah, there's the computer search and the Acer Roller uh, in the uh, prize cards, which means any early damage for Prom Tour is more likely to stick for a little while. Yeah, but I think Acer Roller is not a card which is uh, against Zorak. No. It's, um, <laughs> Hex Maniac is a card against Zorak. <laughs> That's why everyone plays two. Um, at the beginning of the tournament, like I, 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 I looked at all the deck lists from Costa Mesa, mm -hmm. um, but I still had like in my mind it was Hex Maniac was like a situational one-off card that you sometimes need. But it's such an ama <laughs> it's such an important thing in this strategy that you can't play without it. Well, entire decks are built around the idea of ability lock. You have all the Garb Garbador decks that are built just around that it, a bit, like I think on its own, and now every deck has access to that mechanic by the Hex Maniac, which is searchable because you have access to things like uh, you know, the Sapphic Lele to search it out. So it just means that you have such easy access to turning off an entire mechanic in the card game. Uh, so Pedro had to play Chorus in his first turn for only four cards, um, but his board state is already a lot different than Tort's. Tort did find an Ultra Ball and, and also eggs. two eggs. Oh. Oh. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. It's a, clearly, he should have st stuck to the first red card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I've been punished for, for wanting that extra extra card from my uh, setup. Yeah, uh, now he has to uh, think about it. Uh, what he takes. So he can either, of course, take Tapulelo or Shaman EX. They kind of do similar things, but not entirely. And in a Zorak Dex. You usually want to take Shaman first because then you have the chance of just getting a Zorua. Um, like you see, if he draws into like two Ultra Ball, this is kind of like to draw your deck for any Pokemon because you don't need to discard anything, you have Execute. So going for Shaman first gives you the option to draw into way more. And um, you have the option to use Hex Maniac after you get a lot of Zoruas in play. And now, especially for Pedro, we know he has three hand cards. He played a single puzzle, so these are six cards, um, kind of, kind of like six cards, um, which are known, which are cards Pedro has access to. So Hex Mania gets a lot of value because uh, if he is able to evolve, he can directly take a knockout on the Zorua, and he can, uh, yeah, tr start trade trading. go into those cards. Yeah. So that's actually a big reason why Shaman as, a, as the step one is a really nice card. It's because it means that you still have access to go into your Hex Maniac later in the turn. And as we've said many times, Hex Maniac is so important in this matchup. So I don't think we see anything good. And you can see Tor scratching head, <laughs> his head. And I'm not entirely sure what he said there, but it was probably complaining a little bit about what he's drawn. Um, he does have a Getsus. Yeah, but off the f small hand size of Pedro, it's... There's like a very dark card in his hand. I wonder if it's a computer search. Might well it be. Might be a reverse holo Getsus. No, it is indeed yeah. the computer search. So the computer search was actually in his hand before he uses setup. But at this point, he doesn't know what he really wants. Um, this is like 
in sequencing there are it's it's kind of a complicated thing but sometimes you have to go more cards versus more information so to decide on what you search for with computer search you need to have as much information as possible and that's why it's more valuable to know the four cards you draw first than to take the card which is usually like the one thing you want and then drawing one card extra plus if the card you want is something like an x maniac for example you can't you don't even draw more cards of course you don't want to use it and here in this scenario you have the x you don't even need to discard anything um you see double puzzle oh this is really cool um, that's a really nice thing because with access to the eggs already and basically for free early in this game he now gets to have two a specs in a single turn let alone in a single game and two for free ultra balls <laughs> Uh, that one wasn't on the bingo sheet for the single turn. I think we said in the single game because yeah. we thought that was more likely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Tart goes for Ultra Ball, actually discarding hand cards. Um, this way, he can, in theory, use another Shaman if he wants to, or just get rid of these cards. Um, yeah, you want to have supporter card certain supporter cards just in your discard pile. Um, and. You, you don't just have the Battle Compressor. We saw Tord also just like me thinking about, well, I could take a Shaman, right? Um, but I could also take another Justice Aurora. Um. <laughs> so here, slightly odd that he's going back into his deck without having played any cards to do so, but it's very clear that he's about to because he did take the computer switch off the puzzle. No, like he can he didn't shuffle yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's allowed so to go back in. As long as you didn't shuffle, yeah, yeah. you're allowed to um, so do it this way. And he probably won't shuffle anyways because he will play the computer search this turn too. Uh, he's just double checking. Just like probably right. his prize cards just to make sure um, he's not missing anything. Um. So double propagation for computer search. There is another really dark card in the fan that <laughs> I still don't know what it is. I think it's a reverse holo gets this. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. So remember all the plasma reverse foils use the mirror foiling from the pocket source of the era, and all those yeah. cards are much darker. Yeah. So yeah, it's like some cards are really hard to see, especially the rainbow rares, because you never. On the price game, you can actually see it really good for some reason. Uh, yeah, it's just the, the, the light is caught just right. Yeah. But normally on a rainbow rare, it's very hard to tell. Uh, so. Card actually man. going for computer search on it. On a shaman, <laughs> so yeah, he could have taken the shaman first as well, <laughs> um, and another ultra ball, so you can use. Oh, uh, these are crazy turn what one. Well, this is the thing with the propagation as a card is, uh, if we get the scan up uh, of it, because the wording on it is very particular, because it's once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in your discard pile. Which means every single time it goes back into the discard pile, it resets. Yeah. So even though there are only two, it's we just think, well, I've used it, I can't do it again. It's like, no, just keep keep going. Ultra ball as many times as you want for free. Not only that, but you because the hand contents are private, once the AC goes back into the hand, you don't know the same one you discarded. So that's the thing. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a meta rule. Yeah. These yeah. things always reset. It's the same reason why you can use uh, Shaman for... Like you can play AZ on Shaman and then put the same Shaman <laughs> down because the game Forgets. rules kind of for it doesn't of course it doesn't forget it but um, it's because from, is private yeah, yeah yeah this is the reason why all of, everything resets once it's in your hand yeah yeah so it's a kind of a really neat situation to be in to be able to go right these are the rules and we can use them to our full advantage by just picking up my eggs and putting down the eggs as. So a lot. <laughs> I think Todd actually has an Hexmaniac in his hand because he just battle compressored without discarding a Hexmaniac, but he definitely has a Versus Seeker. So now he can go for another Zorua. Um, yeah, going. Who needs Bridget? Yeah, th like, this is exactly what I talked about. This is the reason why you set up first. You can fill your bench with Zoruas no matter what. Um, in theory, like, especially if you have eggs uh, on your starting hand or a battle compressor really early. You don't need anything. Every Ultra Ball is just... Take a card. <laughs> take a card, yeah, exactly. And especially Todd was able to play two computer search with it, <laughs> which isn't really um, a thing you do too often. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, 
Yeah, and here we see the Hex Maniac, like anticipated, his kind of way of playing was uh, really telling. But you can tell that these are the experienced players playing this now, two intercontinental champions who are more than familiar with the idea of sequencing to maximize the odds of getting everything you want in the same turn. And uh, Pedro actually has the Zorok. And Hex Maniac, okay, wow. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> so kind of a shame that Torch does he put so much effort <laughs> into um, playing the Hex Maniac, but yeah, it didn't matter at the end. So, Tord now having to weigh up. Do you go for the Choice Banded Zorak, or do you want to go for the one without the uh, Choice Band? I think he just threw into a Zorak with a Zorak already in hand. I think. So, I think that might mean the Duck Cup we saw earlier. Oh, uh, yeah, the exactly. Yeah, that was probably the, the um, full art Zorak uh, from this big box which is a really cool thing that this exists because otherwise Zorox would be so expensive <laughs> if it would have just been a regular card in a normal set without any promos like to put it not that but the set it came in is also hard to get because of course it's in Shining Legends which yeah. you can only get from specialist products so yeah. that would have exacerbated it even further which is probably why I did get very well. lucky with my Zoroax I bought two boxes and then pulled two more in the oh, boxes wow. so I was like yep <laughs> <laughs> alright so now Torx's turn he can't use any um can, uh, use can, you, can you let the Hex Maniacs on until they are turned off so yeah, that'd we, be, all, that'd be we all remember um, <laughs> these kind of things. It's so it was a um, so on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, it's not so important, yeah. but um, there so we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to retext maniac and can't really see good on the right side of the screen, <laughs> you can now look at the left side. Um, Tord now discarding his hero or Anguru. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really think it would put too much um, into the mirror match in the expanded format but of course uh, ah here yeah thank you very much uh yeah well it's, like he he maintains that the monkey is like his exact words i think were this monkey is broken in the uh, standard format and it's still pretty good here you never lose to whales um but it doesn't put the work in in these arawak mirrors um yeah, uh, as you as as it does in standard format. Like, <laughs> you see the ranger, which question is like, I don't know why I picked this card. This this, this was not the, the yeah, card for this tournament. Yeah, but now there is this weird stalemate thing where both have the uh, Sudovudo in play, and they try to hex as much as possible, but it's just it's too hard if you don't have like such a big hand size um, to get to that point anyway. So they kind of have to take a turret knockout on each other. But Tord was, of because he went first, he's the first person to start attacking. So now Tord can use Trade and he can use um, Hex Maniac as well. Uh, he played the Zorok down there with some enthusiasm. Of, like, this is a, this, let's play so this card. Two cards. Um, he uses Trade once uh, to get a bad compressor. Yet um, now he is uh, maximizing his chances. He's just cutting a Pokemon communication. Because he doesn't really need anything now, it's just a card you don't want to see. Usually you would probably also just discard a Skyfield, but currently there is no Skyfield in play and at some point it needs to be played and looks like oh, another Tapu Lele. It might be, uh, Tapu Lele might be still important uh, in theory if there is a, um, a turn where you need to search your deck for a Hexmaniac for example or just another supporter card. I don't know if Tord actually has both Hexmaniac and Assist Pile already. Um, but he cannot put the Tapolade on the bench right now anyways. He can only bench it if Hexmanic is in place, so it's not very valuable currently. Mm -hmm. uh, so he actually goes for the retreat, so now if he <laughs> actually finds the... He gets full value from that uh, this turn of being able to get exactly the knockout um, that he needed, leaving Pedro without access to trade this turn unless he has a Zoroark in hand. Wait, did he actually Hex? Uh, no, 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 but uh, oh, this yeah, yeah, sure. in play, if, so oh, Only if he has this in, in his hand or... Uh, or has um, a way of getting access to it. Um, and I don't think he does, oh, he's just going for the Skyrim. Onto the Shaman. Oh, he, he does draw one of the Zoroks off that setup, so... 
At least he can protect the Zerua because otherwise Toad will just now put, then play the game off. What if I can just hunt down the Zerua, stop from ever playing a Zoroark? I can deal with getting Sky Return for 30 every turn. I think I can live through this. Yeah, this is a really interesting game. Pedro finding another Hex Minion. So now he can use... He can still use one trade, or no? Oh, can he? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he can trade. Yeah, he okay, trade so again. he trades away the Skyfeed. There's already Skyfeed in play. He doesn't have any eggs um, in the discus pile, only the one on the bench. Uh, in fact, it's actually uh, quite convenient the way that Pedro puts the... and um, both these players are putting the eggs in the discard pile for us, poking out to one side so that we can always go, okay, there are three, or in this case, none uh, in play. Um, I think they're making sure that he didn't trade yet. Um, but I he didn't trade. Pretty sure. Um, well, I don't I don't know what's what's exactly going on. Maybe there's a complete different uh, question too. Well, he didn't draw the cards yet. He, he just declared the trade ability and uh, went, went to discard. Um, he hasn't drawn the cards, so there wouldn't be a penalty in the situation. Yeah, maybe we can find out um, how exactly that happened or what's going on um, but yeah currently we just have to wait um, uh, it looks like this bit of a pause there is, there is no way for us to know all I saw was he used setup yeah I don't think he'd use trade draw cards turn. and he draw the Zorak with the setup ability yeah and he only drew the one Zorak so there's no way for him to be able to have Just a discussion. Um, so, so he played Versika for Hex to put the Hex in his hand, and mm -hmm. then he realized I didn't trade, so mm -hmm. he wants to trade. Um, but what's now exactly? Uh, I don't know for sure. Yeah. So from what we can tell, it just appears to be that there was some disagreement about maybe he'd already used the, the trade that turn. That's why so many players uh, are doing things like tokens on or like uh, marking those Zoroark yeah, in Yeah, I, I use, I use like coins, Yeah, but that's what upside I down, doing. Um, and often, uh, although like um, poison markers, we also had on stream some people who use um, poison markers, but of course, that takes time. Yeah. And uh, of course, the best thing is if you... Um, if, you can, if you're just able to track the game state, then obviously that's the ideal situation, but sometimes having a little reminder can help. Uh, I see a lot of players tap the and like kind of turn it a little yeah. bit, but that can also cause confusion because yeah. that means that like it could be paralyzed or and it's like it's asleep. just it's just annoying if you if your opponent does it for you and you do it for your opponent, no one loses time. But at a tournament setting, you often can't really do that because you need to watch your opponent completely. Um, yeah, so I'm still kind of curious um, what exactly happened. So uh, there, there was a debate over whether Tornado had already drawn the cards after discarding Skyfield or not for the trade. Ah, okay, but yeah. he didn't, right? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, okay, yeah, so, agreed, so okay, yeah. So he played. Um, he, he just draws. He um, had drawn the cards. He used Sky Return to deal thirty damage. Put the Shaman back into his hand. Puts um, Execute Active and Hex Maniac is. And actually, in play this thirty now. damage is actually surprisingly relevant here because it now means that the uh, Zorak on the bench, which doesn't have a choice band, has the Float Stone attached to it, wouldn't need to ch uh, get the choice band to take the knockout. Yeah, if exactly. can fill the bench. So whilst it looks like it was kind of a, a lackluster turn, you know, people go, "Oh, well, it's just a Sky Return. It's not a huge amount of damage." It's actually setting up KOs for further down the line um, that would be very important for him. Yeah, but Torch board state is still more dominant, and he was also Peter had to sacrifice a prize card. And he can not draw four. He can only draw two cards with his trades as not uh, as well. So he does appear to have a very large hand size at the moment, anyway. So it may not be too big of an issue uh, for him to draw through um, and have access to cards. Um, maybe he's just checking the discard pile. This is again. It's another side of the resource management discussion of. Not just looking at what you've used, but make sure you know what your opponent has used because there's no point playing around cards that they don't have access to because they've already used them. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you can tell if your opponent has no puzzles left, if your opponent has no double colors cards left. Um, also stuff like no red cards. We all know Pedro has no red cards anymore. And here we see they forgot um, the Sudobudo, which of course turns off um, again afterwards um, and limits towards bench space to four. So it doesn't really matter too much, he can just discard the Shaman. And it's something which is very easy to forget because it's always turned off on at 
again. And because it's not like because it, it's not like a parallel city where like when it comes into play you go okay this has happened and I have to do something immediately. It happens at kind of slightly odd times of your turn of like okay right oh hex is just enough uh, and I have to make an extra decision at the end of the turn. Um, yeah, Pietro just uses trait as cards as Skyfield. The cards he's drawn into aren't too great. He's just and gonna have to I think, take another Sky return. Cool. Um, just it's like, oh, hang on, I, I can get some eggs. I can just give you single prize that isn't too relevant. Um, so really looking good for Taurus. Mm. Um, me toad hitting the bench. If it's followed by Hexmaniac, um, mm -hmm. Pedro might be able to make this Save me toad stay uh, in play, letting uh, not letting it get knocked out. Um, here we see the Hex, so depending on how many hand cards Tord have, I imagine it's not too much, uh, not too many of course, then um, well, it should be fine, but if he finds himself a way to get how many? Three Pokemon? Yeah. Um, he will also be able to get the knockoff. So, he did draw into the Hex main. Uh, to the oh, no, he needs, he needs four extra Pokemon because if he has three extra, that's seven, so 140, yeah. and that's only 170. Uh, Seismitoad EX has 180 HP. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a good tank in this situation. Yeah, of take a hit, being able to. Uh, ideally, if Pedro can keep chaining. Uh, no, of no, I know, I mean, uh, three is enough. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, he has. Seven bench Pokemon, but of course uh, the active one uh, yeah. is the eighth one. But three is still a lot of Pokemon, uh, a lot of Pokemon to find in this situation. Uh, this is the first time we've had a Seismitoad on stream, as in like actually as one of the cards, yeah. as a scan, <laughs> and it's the semi-finals. Um, it, the expanded has changed. <laughs> yeah. uh, so well, Pedro has what, the option. What does Seismitoad do again? <laughs> <laughs> like he, uh, Pedro has the option um, to ideally start chaining both Hexmaniac. And we know he has the double colors already in hand and Quaking Punch, which means that, yes, Tord is in a good board state, but he will never be able to really advance the board state at that point because without access to items and abilities, he's kind of stuck in his um, his uh, situation. So I think time has been called, and this would be the first turn of yes, time. Maybe. maybe they had a slight time extension for that uh, discussion about the trade. As far as I'm aware, they didn't. Okay. Um, All right, so um, I'll just double check. On. Yeah, yeah, you can point out because uh, in this case, this is played as a normal Swiss game in how it would end in uh, time, I believe. Um, and then it goes to prize lead if it goes to time. So, if there's no winner after three turns, it goes to prize lead. Yeah. Um, as long as Tor draws one extra prize card, because if he if he doesn't draw any prize card, I oh know he has to draw a prize card anyways because it's one one. Mm -hmm. um, so so. Okay. Tor's turn zero. Okay. okay. We can make something on the stream, actually. Something, That'd be something nice. like yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this will be for for the next stream. <laughs> yeah. uh, something I write down so either the judge or the player can put something on the on the table so that everyone knows it's extra turn. Um, a marker or something. Yeah. So and we see a big chorus. Is that a chorus, I believe? So or is it, no, it's just Tord asking how many hand cards he had. Yeah, exactly. Which was and still a lot. <laughs> um, Tord is currently playing an Ultra Ball. He actually discarded a puzzle of time with it. Um, don't know exactly why you would do that. Um, He's going for the stand in Zoroark. Oh, yeah, there is Hex active, so he can propagate, of course. Yeah. Um, so with the with the stand-in Zorak, haven't seen it attack at any point, but it is always a threat. It, it, it's one yeah. of those cards that you get value from without ever actually thinking you get value from. And especially in the like the first game wasn't that great, and the second game, after some turns, Pedro just didn't draw well enough uh, to keep up. So Oracorio as well, <laughs> very slowly played. Oh, yeah. I think I played the Aracario this turn. <laughs> so now it's 170 damage. Um, Torch should have another bench Pokemon, right? I mean, I mean, otherwise he can't take the knockoff. Well, he can VS Seeker, he can draw a whole bunch of cards uh, through one of the many supporters he's gone through, or he can opt to Hex. Um, I think he's gone for the Hex. 
Can't tell, it's just very shiny. Um, did I mess up or did Todd mess up? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, he would need another. Uh... Oh, it's only. It's, a, it's only a normal bench. It's only yeah, five yeah, it's, it's bench. a normal bench. Well, I thought it's two bench Pokemon because he puts the energy yep. um, next to each other. No, so I think what he's going to go for here is uh, by just putting a, a fair bit of damage on the uh, Seismitoad, he's then able to, basically now with the Arakari already on the bench, it puts Pedro in a position where he, if he discards eggs or puts too many resources into discard, and he already has gone through a lot. He's, we already know to uh, put at least two Pokemon in there into KOing the Zoroark. Exactly, and we know there is an egg in there as well, so there are at least three Pokemon, which, which means Arakari can take the knockout unless Pedro gets the egg um, out with Propagation. And um, yeah, we are like we don't know exactly how many Pokemon are in there, but if there are more Pokemon, then um, <laughs> like uh, eggs, exactly. <laughs> mm. oh, you made an dear. unintentional pun, David. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I still don't know what I said. But, um, yeah. So if he has to put the execute on the bench, then Tort can also knock that out as well. Um, if there are a lot of Pokemon in the list of fire. So Hex Maniac is still active, um, so the Sudoboodo doesn't do anything, which means the Sky Field works. <laughs> so you can play a lot of Pokemon into the, uh, on your bench. Yeah, you get into silly situations where the Sudoboodo spends more time turned off than it is actually doing anything productive in these games. So, hold on, apparently Sword might have evolved uh, Zorora the same, the, the same turn you played it. Really? Yeah. Someone in chat saying that. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I but, don't think so. Um, can you replay it on your phone? I, I'll, I'll, I'll try. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, anyway, it's a long turn. I'll, 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 I'll try and look back on this now. Hold on. Um, if someone in the chat could clip that, like if they think that happened, can you try and clip that segment and put the clip link in the chat? Yes, that, so that would save us a lot of time digging for it. Yeah, yeah. thank you if, to anyone who does that in advance. Because uh, I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I don't I didn't think, catch it. Yeah. So, so it's a double puzzle, and I guess he's gonna go take Pokemon out just to prevent the uh, the Oracario finishing, well, effectively finishing this game off. Yeah. So he so he play he gets a Floatstone and he gets the um, Zorua. So I think someone in the chat says it's a roller. It's in the price cards. It's mm -hmm. there. So that's not an option, unfortunately. No. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, of course. That would have been an out. Uh, so now, a big core is coming for ten cards, <laughs> if I can count correctly. Uh, no, it's uh, not, it's eleven cards. Yeah, it's it's a lot of cards. It's yeah. it's always a case of people kind of complaining. Like big wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your support and not a GX attack, so you can yeah. do it multiple times. Oh, the Zoro was down for two turns. It's oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the same way that everyone else does when they have to draw more than seven cards. It's big row of cards before checking. Make sure it's, <laughs> it's not like an extra card. It's also it's especially fair to your opponent because if you have so many hand cards, your opponent can check for you. Uh, if you play N and you're supposed to have five hand cards, it's really easy to see, to mm -hmm. differentiate because my opponent has five hand cards or six hand cards. But the difference between <laughs> 11 and 12, it's that's really hard spot. to see. Yeah. yeah. Because the way people hold their hand cards, if there are so much, is just so different. I actually devolve into kind of doing it as two hands almost. So yeah. like two five card hands is easier. Uh, so Pedro uses a field floor to get rid of the float zone, but not um, the choice band at the active, which means that he will, yeah, he will knock it out anyways. He got the float zone with the um, puzzle of times. And he has so many Pokemon in play, he can just take the knockout on the active one. He already played a supporter, so he can't really do anything. He does need to find the DCE. Oh, no, he doesn't, uh, he yeah, has, yeah, he has one fine, on yeah. the bench. Um, and now he also goes for a Zorro R. Um, but he, I, I think, he cannot evolve, right? No. The, the, he put out both Zoros. Yeah. 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 yeah, he put one with the puzzle, and then the other one he just draw, uh, drew. So. Drew is a weird <laughs> word, because there are people who are called this way, like Drew Drew cards. Like Drew Kenneth. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> don't call your kid Drew. <laughs> uh, Not if you play a trading card PSA. game. <laughs> so, here we actually see that the value from the Sky Returns earlier on comes into full effect, because the Floatstone on the Zoroark 
instead of the choice band makes it much easier to reach this KO with, with having some uh, residual damage already. So, Tord now, it's like, oh, what do I, what do I promote? Well, Tord just needs to double color the synergy because the um, rake through Zorak deals so much damage. But, wait, there is no Hex Maniac. The Hex Maniac, which is currently active, is now going off, which means Pedro can discard his bench. Which means he can discard which the Seismitoad. Dis yeah, he can discard the Seismitoad, which makes Oracorio a lot weaker. But also, um, the Zorak deals less damage. Uh huh. Um, what does this mean again? So, with only four bench Pokemon, this is um, 130 damage, correctly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. Oof. It's uh, not really, awful really good for Pedro to get so many Pokemon. In play. I think they're having a discussion right now about who discards first. This is quite relevant. If Todd discards first, he can discard Sudowoodo and stop that from happening. But if Pedro discards first, then ooh, that's actually there is, a there really is, there nice is a point. ruling. I think even if yeah, because he took the knockout, he can discard. And then like because he had. He had um, he didn't have so many Pokemon that he discards anything. Yeah. So only Pedro needs to discard. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so actually, that the, the, the fact that uh, Todd missed the extra, single extra bench Pokemon, it didn't matter damage wise that turn, but, yeah, but it would have kicked in here that it would have been very different. Yeah. Um, and also, this ruling is it's kind of complicated. I don't know it uh, from the top of my head, but you can look that up. Um, just put into there is a Poker Gym collection of rulings, and this is this should definitely be up. I think I've read it. I mean, the problem is I always read the Japanese ruling, so I don't know what is on the English or in English side yet. Um, but uh, yeah, whatever. It didn't matter here. Otherwise, we could have um, explained that. Two. So Todd will be turn two now, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and just digging through the discard pile. Yeah. Try. Now, and the thing is, they are even on prizes. So now it's the person. Even if, if Tor takes a knockout and Pedro is able to take two prize cards, Tor <laughs> needs, if he whiffs, then he loses. But he would have lost the, like a normal game then yeah. as well because, so now if Pedro doesn't whiff the knockout, we just see a normal game even though it's a timeout. So, so Tor uses his only trade. There is no Hex Mania, yeah, just, just to make sure. <laughs> the judge, I, I, I can totally understand the yeah, judge here. It's like, oh, wait, whoa, 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 uh, whoa, whoa, is there whoa. no Hex? Especially but because with the new thing about, uh, new rule about drawing extra cards, it would be a prize penalty, and that's very relevant right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, as a viewer, you know, you're know, you like, oh, of course there is no Hex, they just discarded cards for Sudovudo. Just making clear for the chat, by the way, it is turn two of time. Torb with yeah. turn zero, so this is currently turn two. Yeah, no one said it's turn three, it's turn two. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, so Pedro would have the last turn, which means that if Tord, if time would have been one extra turn, then Tord would win. Yep. But it's yep. because it's only turn two, Tord can just... Um, if there are 11 Pokemon in that discard pile, you can take the KO on the Shaman. Yes. And uh, there are there are quite a few, but I don't know exactly how many. Like, I'm there's a lot because of the fact that the discard from that Sudowoodo just took out several off the, the bench as well. There's actually a fair few Pokemon in that discard pile now. But you can see Todd having to think it's, about this. It's it's almost never eleven. Yeah, like, I, they they play. Uh, Pedro plays nineteen Pokemon. Todd plays twenty one. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it would have to be like more than half of your Pokemon would have to be in there. I mean, there are six Pokemon in play for Pedro, which means very unlikely. If, if yes, if both of his Zoraks are still in the deck, and then one Tapu Lele is prized. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So if there is no Zorak in in the discard pile. Then, but I don't know if there is. Ah, <laughs> so hard. Um, so complicated. Um, this is why. I really, I really want to be able to just go there and take their discard pile and be like, oh, <laughs> wait a second. It's like, hang on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Just go, right, hang on, guys. What is the board state? Like, this yeah. is this is horrendously complicated. <laughs> so we see a versus seeker. So this could be for the hex maniac. But even if if it's for Hex Maniac, he would he would need the um, oh he goes for he would need the choice band yeah. But if he has a he, if he has a Guzma, he can take the knockout. If he has a Guzma and the double colors energy card, he can take the knockout on uh, Shaman with the um, non mm -hmm. EX um, Zorak, which is 
probably the best way he can do now because then saves. he prevents Pedro from taking a double prize knockout, potentially of course. Um, but let's see if he actually he has a stand-in, Guzma for Sudovudo. So he didn't uh, he wasn't able to have the double penalty. <laughs> Pedro was probably very happy about that. Uh, like when you saw he takes the Guzma, he was like, Oh no, you got to <laughs> take me out with that cards. One. Um, but it's not. And this is turn and three of time. Wait, no, this is turn three. So if Pedro takes a knockout, he wins, right? Yes. Yeah. And he doesn't need an awful lot to do it. He has, he has so many hand hands. cards. And it's only... I think there's 100 damage there. So if I he mean, just gets the Hex... Uh, he just... And, and a few Pokemon? That's uh, it. Yeah. He just, and I think he's holding at least one puzzle. So he has another Zora. Um, you First trade. Hey, you got the, yeah, so this is another Pokemon. He can take the Egg if he has a Hex Maniac. Um, well, actually, so here he has to make sure he can. T he has to have the hex to be able to ever find this. So he's actually putting them back into deck because uh, I think with the eggs in discard, one egg in discard, that's one Pokemon he always has access to. Access to, and I think he's holding a. Oh no, okay, so. Oh, let's let's see how like this. This might be the last turn. <laughs> well, it definitely is the last turn because of the uh, fact that it's turn three. No, if if Pedro can only take one prize card, oh, yeah, then they going. continue playing. Um, so if he has a Guzma, he can retreat, then play Guzma and take a knockout on one of the bench Pokemon. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm... Ooh, <laughs> you can see him uh, big breaths and trying to work out well, what's he happening. Yes, he has Maniac. And he has two Pokemon in his hand, right? So he can play Hex and win. I think he's just being very, very careful. Yeah, he's like, I definitely have a Okay, so he plays the Hex. Thing. He puts yeah. two Pokemon on the bench. Uh, yes, yeah, even yeah, one yeah. one. Yeah, that's oh, really very, such very a cool good game. game. Wow, coming right down to the wire. Yeah, it looked it looked really good for Tord in between. Like the first turn was amazing, and like that that turn where Pedro had the um, the uh, Seismitoad active, I was like, oh boy, if, that's yeah, it. If he misses um, it now, it could it could. But that was so tears, well played. That's such a good game. Yeah, um, just go to show. The caliber of play that we have seen throughout this tournament and going into this final now, it's been extremely high. Yeah. And we've seen some fantastic games on the stream. And it just goes to show that players who can do this consistently are yeah. extremely talented. And also, now we know that Pedro is the better Oceania winner. Yeah, so that settles the debate there of who's, <laughs> Finally. who's really king of Oceania. <laughs> All right, so... Um, I think we can talk a little bit with Pedro about it. That so, so many cool things um, we can talk about with him. Until then, you have to look at our face again. The computer <laughs> guy just <laughs> ran away. <laughs> ran away. And, oh um, wait a second. Um, I will. I will sort this out. We'll give him a little break, maybe perhaps uh, before.